Hey, Soul Survivors, I have a viewer topic request. Sorry, I've been sick, so my voice isn't the best, but this is what they say. We're going to go through it piece by piece so we can kind of further understand it. Uh, when is somebody a narcissist? When are they not? So this person goes, can somebody tell me their opinion? So you guys can feel free to kindly join in. But they say, my ex was with her husband for nine years. Then she left him. She did a smear campaign on him to her family and friends. I got with her like three and a half months after she made him move out. She told me this is when the divorce was finalized. I later found out she didn't file until like six months into us dating. So let's start with that right there is uh, there's already some narcissism where she did not want to fully share her story. Uh, it's a manipulation tactic so she could get what she wants. There are people who are not narcissist with a narcissistic personality disorder, but that is a red flag right there that she's more concerned about herself, keeping the story. Also, they talk about the smear campaign. So it continues on. And a year after the filing, it was still pending. I found this out that she was lying about this after I was discarded. So a lot of times, uh, narcissists will live this lie for the entire duration of your relationship and you only find out their secrets after the discard so that is another red flag she smeared her ex campaign uh ex-husband to me as well a lot of narcissists will smear the person that they were with now i don't know her exact story so maybe it could be a legitimate story sometimes two toxic people can be together so we don't know the true story about what was going on with her and her ex-husband so this person continues i believed her at the time but now i suspect it was all exaggerated bs to make her the victim and that's where it's hard to tell because uh, there are times that, you know, even through reactive abuse, that somebody has abuse done upon them. That's why if you've been with a narcissist, there are times legitimately that we do hurt people. It's a reactive thing. It's a toxic thing. So um, whether it's active or reactive, um, it is still abusive. So he continues, um, we were together for one and a half years. First, she loved by me. Then she got hot and cold, then cold, silent treatment, and a lot less affection. And to truly understand where that comes from, we have to really get into the relationship to understand what is causing the withdrawal. But if things were going smoothly, you know, the hot and cold, if there was nothing um, that you are doing within that relationship. It, it could be external factors where maybe she was cheating or uh, there are times that they can feel, feel a little bit of guilt or they feel overwhelmed. They don't know how to juggle this or maybe she was spending more time with the ex-husband or a boyfriend. So the hot and cold is not a stable person. So whether they're a narcissist or not, they're not stable and you deserve somebody who is stable or to at least talk through it, try to get on a strong uh, common ground and um, continues on. Then she blindsided me via text a day after she said she loved me. And that can happen. That's why it's really confusing. And we had that intermittent reinforcement, uh, the discard cycle that happens, the devaluation. They go from loving you, supposedly, to, you know, discarding you or not even acknowledging that they said that they loved you. She gave me a BS reason for the breakup. A lot of times that's what happens. It's not like a true thing. Like we fight all the time or I want kids and you don't, or I feel so bad. Um, maybe it's not fair, but if you can't produce children with me, that's, you know, my heart desire. Um, so uh, she, the, the BS reasons are often what it is. It's not like a legitimate thing. She came and picked me up her things a few days later and she was ice cold and indifferent. Like we didn't even know each other. And, um, you know, there are other types of uh, traumas that can cause somebody to withdraw or uh, sometimes people feel guilty or they are afraid of not knowing what to say. So they shut down, but it can also be a sign. And it, it's um, also a sign of emotional insecurity. So continues on, it was strange. 
And then she was showing her new man on social media like two weeks later. You'll see that a lot where a narcissist will post things on social media, whether it's to brag or to uh, love bomb the other person saying that, yes, it's almost like they're claiming them and posting them to say this is an official relationship, which two weeks is really hard to decide who you want to be with for a long period of time. And they did recognize this. They said, showing her love bombing him in the post, like hearts and babe type text on the screen. I unfollowed her at this point, which is a healthy thing to do because if we're constantly watching them or, uh, you know, in a sense, stalking them, it's not going to help us to move on. And it can be quite hurtful. So we're just hurting ourselves. And it doesn't change what our relationship is. So there's really no need to prolong the pain. And, you know, they're unstable. So, you know, it's not a healthy thing to keep doing. So I'm glad you did that. So they continue. My question is, I did not think she was a narc at all since she was in a long marriage. And we have to be careful on that. Just because somebody has been married for a long time does not mean that they are in a healthy relationship, able to have healthy uh, long-term relationships, whether they're married or not. So there are times that people just appease a narcissist. And she claimed he was the only guy she slept with. Now she's at body number three, at the very least, all within a year. So that can happen. But if somebody is uh, that free, that they had three people quickly, and, um, you know, it goes to their self-esteem, uh, you know, um, you know, how old is she? What were her actions? Uh, it is possible that was her first person, but probably not. So you can kind of see what her actions are. And, uh, you know, is she shy or is she uh, physically or is she uh, seeming experienced? But to go uh, sometimes, you know, three three people within a year, a lot of times is an unhealthy coping me mechanism, which again goes to the emotional, um, I'm at a loss for the word, uh, not grown up, emotional delay, I guess. So does this sound like a narc? I'm confused because I dealt with one before in the past, but she had slept with a bunch of men and also left her long-term husband. So there are times it's easier to tell, you know, somebody just going person to person to person, they can be narcissistic, borderline, other types of mental illness, low self-esteem, needing a, a body for them to feel that they're beautiful or worthy which is not a healthy way to build your self-esteem up. Now they say, I'm thinking she might be a narc based on how she coldly discarded me and love bond me. I'm also surprised we made it a year and a half. I hit some financial difficulties temporarily and that's when she bounced. Let me know how she could or could not be a narc. So to get into that further, you know, once uh, whatever the supply is, whether it's sex, social status, uh, finances, so she was probably looking for somebody to take care of her, to make her life easier. She wasn't necessarily in it to have a full relationship to make your life easier. <laughs> I've been sick all week. Um, so is she a narcissist? We have to uh, realize that we're not um, psychologists, psychiatrists, but there are narcissistic tendencies. There are toxic traits. And the fact that uh, somebody can coldly discard you if there was no issue within the relationship, usually you build in a relationship. And if you truly love the person, it continues to grow. It gets confusing when we all have our bad days or we all have little temptations or failures or a need to kind of focus on ourselves instead of our, our person. But overall, she uh, can easily discard. She can easily have sex with uh, people without like a long-term investment. And um, hiding things is a very toxic trait. So she does show a lot of things that are narcissistic. Is she necessarily a narcissist? That's hard to tell. I don't know the full story. I don't know her. And it is hard to analyze somebody because they do lie so much. So over time, a lot of the lies will unfold and you'll start to see them. But this person is toxic. This person does not have a deep connection. And that's why they're able to move on so quickly. The love bombing, 
uh, gets confusing because healthy people can love bomb. They can be so excited and in love that they want to take you places and spend time with you. So love bombing in itself is not a really good indicator because you can be a healthy person and want to talk to someone. She's not a healthy person for you. And I'm glad that you blo block them on or got rid of the social media where you're not checking up on them all the time, because instead of focusing on what's going on with them, we should focus what's going on with ourselves and build our life and to realize what is, is, and to not try to force things. And sometimes, you know, we, we just want to find out the information. Uh, sometimes it, it released some of our stress on things like, was it my fault? What could I have done different? Because if you've been in these relationships, you start ruminating, you start trying to figure out what did I do wrong? And we have to realize if somebody can go person to person without any downtime and grieving that they're into superficial relationships. So if you guys are hurting, it's because you were invested in this. And, you know, when we're confused about it, you know, it, it means that we wanted to do our best and we, um, you know, want to do better. Uh, sometimes we want to correct the situation, but there are many, many signs that this person is not for you. And the fact that they were able to leave and leave you blindsided, you know, um, they probably had more than one person at a time. That is another sign that it could possibly be a narcissist where somebody has no respect for you physically to where they're just using you for sex. They, uh, hopefully you guys, uh, talked about it to where if you were intimate with them, that you had the discussion instead of assuming that just because two people are physical together, that they have a commitment. So in future relationships, always make sure that you connect with the person. So this is what this means. If we're intimate, we're not seeing other people or fooling around with other people. So communication is key. We can't just assume things. We can't assume all people are good, that all people will uphold these unspoken rules in society. So there are a lot of traits that are narcissistic. And, you know, if you can think about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, she is histrionic and borderline. So she is not a narcissist, but there are narcissistic traits. So don't worry about, is this person a quote unquote narcissist? Which mental illness do they fall into? The person's toxic and the person is unstable and the person is not committed and you deserve so much more than what they gave you. It's, it's hard to go through because it hurts when people blindside us that we believed that we were in this relationship and it can get confusing. Like there were so many good times, but if somebody can be that cold to you, they're not one of your people and you deserve to be surrounded by people who have your best interest at heart. I hope that helps. Please like share, comment and topic requests are always welcome. I hope that helped.